What's up, guys? Eric here at DGDC Cycling. And we're here to do a little mini review on the Garmin Edge 1050 after 2,000 kilometers. Yeah, that's right, 2,000 kilometers we've put on this Garmin Edge 1050 on the road and on the gravel. So it's a good time to talk about it a little bit. Let's go. All right, let's start with the elephant in the room. The price and the size. Both, yeah, they're big. But if you're watching this, I don't think that really matters. So skip over it. And if it matters, you should be looking at, I don't know, the 840, the 540, whatever else Garmin makes. Everybody else, carry on, carry on. Let's keep rolling. All right, so Eric's experiences with cycling computers is pretty short. I've had, uh, I just had the Bolt V2 color screen. And then previously to that, we had a Bolt V1. So I was only in the Wahoo ecosystem. The short reason why I went that direction out of the gate when I got into cycling was because I knew I was gonna get me a Wahoo kicker and I don't know, something in me thought I was gonna be using it to train and whatever, but let's be real, we're only using Zwift 100% of the time. So those were the two devices that I had in the past. I mean, nothing wrong with them. They were great. A uh, few things I definitely wish I had. One was more battery life for those full day bangers. 250, 300 Ks in distance, so yeah. With the bolts, I would always have to carry an external battery. And uh, usually at lunchtime, I juice it up just to make sure it get me home without any battery anxiety. Other than that, not too many other complaints. Maps were all right. They got the job done. All the data was great. Uh, the app was great. Again, not too much to complain about with the Bolt V1 and V2. But as soon as we got the Garmin Edge 1050 Plus, there were a couple of huge advantages right out of the gate. One, bigger screen. Two, better battery. Three, way better maps. A few other sweet upgrades that I noticed was boot up time, so much faster. Being able to put this unit into sleep mode just allows it to wake up super duper fast. Even from fully shut down, it comes on really fast. And then uh, connecting to GPS is this thing is so fast, like four or five times faster than the Bolt is. So coming out of the office, parking garage, coming outside, it connects right away, right away. I want this e-bike draft. This is how y'all boy steals your comms. So the number one favorite thing so far on this 1050 is the screen. I mean, it's big, it's bright, it's mighty fine. So much data everywhere. I mean, it's great in the day, it's great at night. <laughs> I, nothing else to say. So, screen, check. Number two. This battery life is unbelievable. Like, I charge it to 100% and it tells me I have like 30 hours. And then that's not even when battery saver mode. Put in a battery saver mode and it's out of control. The battery really proved its point on my latest Niagara trip this year. We went to Niagara and back, 322 kilometers. I mean, this thing was on for like 14, 15 hours straight in regular mode. And uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I mean, I might have to double check, but pretty confident I had easily 40% battery. Honestly, that blew me away. It was really, really nice to go on a ride and not have any battery 
anxiety. Oh, almost died there. She wasn't looking at all. All right, back to the battery life. I went on a weekend vacation and never charged it. Used it like for two solid outdoor rides and then a mini shakedown in Tremblant. That was the first time I used it and I mean, phenomenal. So yeah, battery life is almost too good. It's so good that I almost forget to charge it. I'm pretty sure I've taken it down to like 5%. And even at 5%, the unit says, I can go out for a ride that's like four, five, six hours, which is crazy. Absolutely crazy. So yeah, screen, check, battery life, check, check. Definitely number one and two favorite things so far. Other things that I really like, the software. Software is pretty good. It's quick, snappy. I haven't had any issues at all. No reboots, no freezes, nothing. And honestly, it's not like the bolts did either. I don't know, in my lifetime, one or two at the most. So, am I gonna be upset if the Garmin does that? No, because it might happen from time to time. But so far, 2,000 kilometers, hours and hours of ride time, nothing. So, software is great. Other things about the software that I really, really like, I can actually customize things on the unit itself. I don't need to depend on the app and the app only, but the great thing is that I can just hold a field on the screen and adjust it to whatever I please in the middle of my ride. No complaints about that whatsoever. And then the other things I like in the software is this Connect IQ thingy, downloading extra, I don't know, what do you call them, widgets or data fields. I don't know if you can see, but I currently have the wind field here, which I love. It tells you what the wind speed is, and then it also tells you the arrow, or sorry, the, the, it has an arrow, and it also has an arrow that tells you what direction it's blowing, and it turns with you. So right now, the arrow's pointing this way, and if you see that flag, same thing. So we're currently in some headwind right now. We'll go to the end of William Halton Parkway, flip it around, and then sail home. Sail home. Oh, and then the other thing I really like in this software, because uh, we have Garmin now, it integrates with my Garmin Varia and my Garmin Varia front light. And now, ah, the sweet part is I can go into the menu system here, go to lights, and I can change it to flash, solid, off, peloton mode, which is amazing. And then the other beauty is that uh, I can now see the battery. That's something I never could figure out with the front light. Maybe it's just because I never was able to connect it or I never did, I don't know. Regardless, I definitely really, really like the integration. I mean, it makes sense, right? Garmin, Garmin. Goddamn headwind. But yeah, the maps, so much more detailed, so much more responsive. They tell you where you need to go a lot better and quicker. Reroutes, very fast. I mean, as expected, let's be real. Garmin maps, one of the best, one of the best. Oh, and you know what the number one feature is, right? The bell, baby, the bell. Oh, this headwind blows so hard. The other good thing about this that I noticed compared to the Bolt was just how fast all the Bluetooth and plus sensors connect. Once you turn the unit on and all your fidgets, I mean, they're instantly connected, instantly. I haven't had to worry at all or look or wait or anything. So again, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> 
Now I'm a Garmin whore, and I'm not even getting paid. I'm getting ripped off here. Time to talk about some bad things. There's not too many bad things, but if you change them to good, that takes away some of the good and makes those bad. So it's a give and take, it's a give and take, but obviously size and weight, this Nokia phone is massive and yes, it's heavy. And uh, I didn't need a new mount, but you might need a new mount. It's a beast, but again, you're not buying it to be a weight weenie. You're buying it because you love technology and you gotta have the latest and greatest. But yeah, if you make it smaller, you don't get the cool big screen and then your battery life also decreases. So that's what I said about give and take. It's a give and take. If you're a weight weenie, just don't even have a computer. Wear a watch, have a little tiny thing, put it in your back pocket. Everybody else, get what you want. <laughs> All right, let's actually talk about something I, I do miss a lot and wish the Garmin had, was more physical buttons. Just a couple of buttons here at the bottom to switch screen or do something. I definitely miss them. I mean, again, do not get me wrong. The touch screen is awesome, but sometimes when you're smashing with the boys and girls, it's not easy. Or when you're like struggling to breathe and survive, not easy to find what you need doing this touchscreen business. So I wish I had both. That honestly is my number one and only gripe I can think about. All right, what else is bad about this? I don't know. There's not much, like I said, size, weight having a few more physical buttons that would be useful i mean the lap button cool but i don't need it that badly i know if i get a di2 system you can get buttons but i want it to do it on the unit itself <laughs> honestly that's all i can think about lots of pros a couple of cons not too many though overall this unit i i love it it's fabulous the bell amazing i love using it on my gravel rides or on the trails and stuff like that keeps the bars crispy nice and clean no extra crap floating around all right boys and girls that's all i got if you're mad, let me know in the comments. Do you have one of these? Let me know if you love it in the comments. Do you want one? Again, let me know in the comments. All right, boys and girls, you know the drill. You do you, you set your own goals, you smash them, you move the goalposts and you smash them again. DGDC out, baby.